Good morning, everyone. We're going to keep drumming while I'm talking here. I wanted to let you know about a couple of things that are in your bulletin while we're drumming. There's, um, there's a yellow card, and if you don't see one of those, there are some here at the altar. And these yellow cards are for you to write down any specific sort of prayer request. Can you can keep it going, Gary, guys, keep it going. Any prayer requests or any celebration? <laughs> They're a little wild back here. Except we're going to do a, a celebration. If you have a celebration, we'd like to acknowledge that towards the end of the service. If you have a special prayer request, we'd want you to write it there. That's the first thing you have. Write legibly because Charles will make those announcements at the end. And then the other thing that we'd like you to make uh, to note on is the dove. Today is All Saints Day. It's not formally All Saints. That's always the day after Halloween. But it's when we celebrate it here at the church. We remember folks who we've lost, loved ones, uh, good friends. And what we'd like you to do is to put their name, anyone you're thinking of, if you'd like to, on the dove. And then when it's time for the offering, which is at the front of our service with our opening song, then bring that in the card up to the offering plate and drop it in there. Tonight, there'll be a very special celebration happening in the sanctuary that will involve choirs from uh, First Church in Houston as well as as well as our choir and a 40-piece orchestra. So there'll be 80 choir members and a 40-piece orchestra, and it's a great celebration. And all the doves that have been gathered from throughout the services today are going to be hanging in the sanctuary uh, as part of our celebration. So I'd encourage you to come back for that at 6 as well this evening. But we'd really love for you to, to have your someone you remember um, hanging also from that, uh, that mobile that we create this afternoon. So... You take that, take a moment. If you don't have a pencil or pen, there's some pencils up there, but look around and neighbors might have something as well. And um, then you bring it up after when we do our first opening song.
don't think my microphone is working quite yet, but uh, maybe you'll be able to hear me. Ah, now, okay. Um, so we come together this morning uh, on All Souls Sunday, and the celebration this evening will include those little um, doves, I think, uh, in, in a, a very powerful way, uh, a, a wonderful musical experience celebrating all those who have gone before us and the loved ones gone on. And we, uh, we just invite you to participate in that by um, maybe writing something on a, one of the doves and putting it in the basket. Uh, this morning, we're also continuing a series that we've been doing on um, the different uh, aspects of human consciousness and the spiritual path of emptying out and shedding things that keep us from being more whole, more balanced, more flexible, more open to how the spirit of, of uh, life might move through us. So I invite you this morning as we begin to draw to your own thoughts and minds, what, what is it that uh, you need most in your thinking, in your thinking? What is it that you think about all the time? And particularly for this moment right now, uh, how often do you think of the blessings and the gifts in your life? Let's stand and we'll say a prayer. Holy One, we are created as creatures who are just designed to learn to take things for granted. It's like the moment that we begin this life, learning our way into the world, the more we can automate the way we see things, the more we automate aspects, the more we can do. We practice automating and taking for granted things like words, vowels. We take for granted the notes on a keyboard so that we can make chords and melodies. The more we take for granted, the more we can do. But taking for granted also means sometimes we st don't stop to just take notice, to see the miracle in the moment, to see the grace flowing through all of your creation. Help us be mindful enough to always give thanks, to always say thanks to always see the blessing. So we pray. Amen. Let it go, my love, my truest. Let it sail on silver wings. Life's a twinkling, that's for certain. But it's such a fine thing. And there's a gathering of spirits. There's a festival of friends. And we'll take up where we left off when we all meet again. I can't explain it. I couldn't if I tried. Now the only things we carry are the things we hold inside Like the day in the open Like the love we won't forget Like the laughter that we started in And it hasn't died down yet Let it go, my love, my truest Let it sail on silver wings Life's a twinkling, that's for certain But it's such a fine thing there's a gathering of spirits There's a festival of friends And we'll take up where we left off When we all meet again Oh yeah, now didn't we? And don't we make it shine? Aren't we standing in the center of something rare And find some glow like embers Or light through colored glass some give it all in one great flame Throwing kisses as they pass Let it go, my love, my truest Let it sail on silver wings Life's a twinkling, that's for certain But it's such a fine thing 
There's a gathering of spirits There's a festival of friends And we'll take up where we left off When we all have a little bit of saxophone here to greet one another with signs of peace.
morning. I'm Don Longfellow. I'm going to read for you the scriptures this morning in Romans in chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace of God giving to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think of with a sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Please join me in the reading of Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. I could while away the hours Conferring with the flowers Consulting with the rain And my head I'd be scratching While my thoughts I was a hatching If I only had a brain I'd unravel every riddle For any individual In trouble or in pain with the thoughts I'd be thinking me, I could be another Lincoln if I only had a brain. Oh, I could tell you why the oceans by the shore. I could think some thoughts I'd never thunk before. And then I'd sit and think some more. If I had a brain, I'd use it, play brain games, never lose it, or ever go insane. I could be a top neurologist, or perhaps a pop psychologist, if I only had a brain. Oh, I could be like Charles, helping every Jim or Jane or John or Carl. I could maybe even play piano, too. Who wouldn't want to be a singing therapist, <laughs> wouldn't you? I would not just be a nothing, my head all full of stuff and my heart full of pain. I would dance and be merry and my life would dingle dairy if I only had a brain. If I only had a brain. If I only had a brain Let's join in singing this little song together. <clears throat> join me, the singing therapist. <laughs> Makes me think of that guy that was the singing mailman. He used to yodel on TV. Reach out your hand If your cup be empty If your heart Oh, uh -huh. 
Just close your eyes for a minute and think about that uh, place where your own cup needs filling a little bit. Since we saw each other a week ago, we've all been on different journeys of discovery and recovery and sometimes just taking a moment to notice and remember some of those high points and low points. And maybe most importantly, what are we learning along the way? Just to pause for a moment and think of the people um, that you've interacted with. It's funny how the cycle of the seasons just, they keep coming and going. The time changes, the weather changes, and the people in our lives, they flow in and they flow out every day. We share a journey for sometimes only a minute, sometimes for many, many years. And then they're gone. Leaving something on our hearts having shaped something about who we are and how we think. Maybe today is a good day to just remember. Just to recall the gifts given. one heart to another. To remember the generosities of a mentor. forgiveness of a parent. A 
and to remember how through even some of the hardest conflicts that happen between all who ever learn to love each other and care enough to feel so personal about something that in the midst of the conflicts that are so inevitable that what we remember can be more about the healing that came. And maybe recover that sense of how fortunate we are just to get to share the journey. I just invite you to draw to your mind maybe one person who was generous with their love for you. Mr. Eckhart once said, if the only prayer you ever pray is thank you, that's enough. generosity that's been given to us. Maybe we begin to feel just a little bit more how generous life is. The gift of just being here. The gift of the sun and the trees and the air and the earth and the rivers. Amen. I got such a mess between my ears Like dishes in a sink Stuff I don't believe just tumbles in I don't have room to think All my failures are on display Broken dreams of yesterday Stuff I should have thrown away But I kept it here instead I got an empty out the inside of my head I got an empty out the inside I got an empty out the inside of my head This could be a room with such a view but it's covered up with junk Blocking out the place the light gets through So it keeps me in this fun These dark clouds are stored away Just in case of a sunny day I could stand in the pouring rain With every tear that I've ever shed I gotta empty out the inside of my head Empty out the inside of my head I got to empty out the inside Help me empty out the inside of my head I'd like to turn this place into my home Instead of some place that I dread 
Cause it's the only room that's mine alone And I'll live here till I'm dead I'll sort through what I have found Stuff that works I'll keep around But I can't live weighted down With every cool word that they've said I gotta empty out the inside of my head I got empty out the inside of my head. I got empty out the inside of my head. I got empty out the inside. 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 I got empty out the inside of my head. Help me out the inside. Got empty out the inside of my head. <clears throat> Ever feel that way? I certainly do sometimes need to empty out all that stuff running around in my head like right now I have the name Slim Whitman running around in my head <laughs> the singing mailman from when I was a child they had advertisements on TV did you ever see those you have Slim Whitman he was a yodeler he was the singing mailman evidently he was very popular in Europe but they sold a, a lot of anybody ever own a Slim Whitman record you wouldn't acknowledge it, would you? <laughs> That's what's running around in my head right now. So I'm going to empty that out. So um, the singing therapist today wants to share a few thoughts with you uh, about thinking. Uh, what is it, I, I guess I'm trying to say in this whole series is sometimes um, we might find our way to some of that stuff Jesus talked about by considering some of the newer information about human consciousness and applying some of the same spiritual truths that have been here forever. In other words, maybe more of us can find our way to a little more enlightenment through kind of combining some understanding about our neurobiology and the way human consciousness works that's evidenced in a lot of new research and applying ancient spiritual truths like we talk about the four paths of creation spirituality that's a part of what we do here in 1111 from the christian perspective we talk about four ways in which our spiritual journey has take, takes different shapes there are times where we talk about the celebration of entering in fully into life not holding back the the path of the via positiva during this period of the year, we talk a little bit about the Via Negativa. What does it mean in our spiritual lives, in our journeys through life and relationships to sometimes find ourselves clinging to things that we might find greater openness and wholeness by learning to let go? And so taking this spiritual path to heart during this season, I'm applying this model of human consciousness that comes from a book called The Art of Awareness by Samuel Bois. And we've explored now um, the, the past and the future and the environment and the feeling. The last three of his components have to do with thinking, electrochemical, and self-moving. He's defining what is it that goes into the way human beings go about continually filtering and experiencing the world and making meaning out of it. This is his model for the semantic transactor, the meaning-making transaction that human beings are continually involved in doing. And he sees all of these components, these seven components, as aspects of consciousness that interact in particular ways. And once they begin to interact in particular ways, they become relatively scripted. In other words, your way, your particular way of experiencing and taking in meaning and seeing life becomes a pattern 
defined by all of these different pieces. In other words, your past, think about it, just think about your recent past, like what you did last night. I was with a group this morning doing preparing for marriage, uh, a class for getting ready for getting married, and, um, you know, one of the couples came in a little bit late. She had had her bachelorette party last night. <laughs> and her recent past had provided her with a particular experience that was giving and shaping her current experience in ways that were different from other people. Where were you last night? I don't want to know. Really, it's okay. You don't have to tell me. I'm just saying where you were last night, what you were experiencing early this morning, your recent past is currently shaping how you're experiencing this moment. So the past is a part of our experience. Another way to think about that is how many times have you been to something like what you're doing right now? Is this, if this was your very first time to ever come here, like we sometimes have visitors from Asia or, or uh, Dallas who come here. <laughs> and participate in this service who have never done anything like this before. And their experience is quite different from those of us who have grown up in a church or had experiences kind of like this. Uh, we, we sometimes get people who have been to church all their lives who come to 11.11. They, they, they're like, what is this? Like, this is not what I'm used to. But whatever your past experience is, is a part of defining what you see. Because like anybody, you and I, Compare this moment to past moments. The past is a part of what we're thinking in this moment. So how you think about this moment is deeply impacted by how you've experienced past moments. What you think about me is, is a part of that, right? If you've ever heard me sing, the singing therapist thing, or if you know nothing about me and you're thinking, this guy's an idiot, why are they talking about him so much? Thank you very much, Tom. So this whole idea of how our past is shaping this moment is important. The future piece, how our imagined future impacts our experience. This moment is being filtered in your consciousness by what you are expecting to happen next. So, for instance, this moment if you know that this talk is supposed to go about 15 minutes and it goes 17 minutes, there are some expectations about your anticipated future that will begin to define your experience of how you're experiencing what I have to say. Also, you know, your expectation of the content, if the content is um, doesn't fit your particular you know, ideas or expectations, then it's going to probably trigger some stuff for you that will have some feelings that impact what you take in. That's the way we operate. The anticipated future that you have is kind of like a goal, and the goals that you have in any moment are helping give meaning and defining your experience right now. What's your goal right now? Well, frankly, when I went to church as a kid, my goal was to get through it and get on to lunch, frankly. I have known people whose goal when they came to church was everything under the sun. Going to find a partner, going to uh, maybe find somebody to date. Um, maybe I'll find a little word of inspiration. Maybe sometimes looking for healing, looking for something to heal an old hurt. People come into this room with so many different goals, don't they? their anticipated future, what they're wishing for. How does that define how you see what happens in the room? It's whether or not it meets what your particular need or desire is. And then we talked about the environment shaping us. And then we talked about feelings last week, how feeling, uh, what we feel is a, is a pattern. My point in kind of Going back over some of that is just to say this. What Bois suggests is, is that all of these are continually working together. And you can't really take one piece out of the mix and say, I'm just a thinking person. What you are thinking is impacted by what you are feeling and what you're expecting and what you have experienced. 
So there are times when what we are thinking gets really stuck, not only just as individuals, but as a culture. I mean, really, if you kind of read history, you can see epics. Uh, Dan Manning is a student of history, and, and I'll bet you he could probably lay out for you in ways I couldn't even begin to verbalize. Epics where what people were thinking had become kind of a stale spot where uh, until something fresh and new came in, there wasn't anything that could change. And that happens for us individually and as a culture. Look at our institutions today. Schools, prisons, government. We're living, I believe, on the cusp of something that has to change, some new evolutionary leap that has to happen in our capacity to perceive things, to see things differently. But maybe your life is in the same space. Maybe your life is also at a place where you're in need of that evolutionary leap to happen for you. Often we find ourselves ruminating, thinking through the same things over and over again, as if we can't get those bells to quit ringing in our heads. <laughs> it's like the same thing over and over and over again. Do you ever find yourself in that spot? What I want to suggest for you for a moment today, if you don't think that the way you think about things has become a scripted, boxed kind of experience, then consider just asking yourself one question. Just for a moment today, ask yourself, what is it that I never think about? What is it that I just never allow myself to think about? What you'll begin to notice, if you just begin to ask that question, is that your thoughts tend to stay in a fairly, you know, defined area. There was a philosopher who once said, if you want to understand people, if you want to know someone, don't ask them what they know. Discover what it is they don't want to know. Part of what we can learn about ourselves is the rigidity, the loss of flexibility that we have with regard to considering, thinking outside of our little box. And I want to suggest to you that the evolutionary leap, the renaissance needed in our lives and in our culture right now, has more to do with challenging that rigidity and opening ourselves up to listening again, to considering, thinking about things that I have felt were unacceptable to think about. You want to grow? You want to discover something new in your life? you got to think about things that you never would have let yourself think about before. That you saw as either not okay or too different or something. You want a renaissance? That's where you have to go. You have to go into the darkness. So I'll finish with this last little quote from Carl Jung. He said, We do not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by calling the darkness into consciousness. Think about that. We spend most of, much of our time replaying and throwing up images in our heads that we've thought before. We find ourselves communicating over and over again with other people, trying to convince them of those images as the images. And the longer we do that, the more stuck our culture gets, the more rigid, inflexible, and incapable of change our culture gets and our lives become. How do you find some enlightenment in that? You don't find it by somehow clinging more tightly to your images. You find it by going into the darkness, maybe the darkness of unknown. And to be able to say, I don't know, is part of that unknown. You want to find a little path into some change. Take one certainty that you feel so strongly about and take that certainty and just let it not be so certain for a moment. 
we use words as a way to hold things tight. Sometimes we use them to run away from our own sense of ambiguity in life, as if to stare up at the sky and to not know what those lights, what those things up there are called, would be too overwhelming. And so we call them stars and we name them in constellations. To let go of the names and just have the experience is the only way things actually can change. And I can experience again with my whole soul and body what it means to be alive and not just talk about being alive. The path of the Via Negativa is about emptying out and letting go. We've held too tightly to our rational way of being. And the world is not all about being rational. Sometimes it's about immersing yourself in the experience and letting it just be. We don't become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by calling the darkness into consciousness. As we move into the season where the light becomes shorter and the night becomes longer, maybe we can use that as a metaphor for our lives and take faith that somehow even letting go of the names and the certainty of everything, we are still gifted by such generous love surrounding us that we may, in the process, find our way to something better, something new. Amen. Will you join us? Let's stand and sing together.
So today we're celebrating a few things. Uh, Kyle uh, is celebrating that Decker made first chair in the regional band. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> Elizabeth uh, McAvery and, Eli and uh, Francis Cooper uh, celebrating 95. 95? Yeah, two ladies uh, who have brought many blessings to those around them. And Amanda is celebrating the, the, the falling back of time. <laughs> we also want to celebrate that, uh, now I'm blanking, Chen. Gary Chen and Sue Hammond have gotten uh, married. Mm -hmm. uh, they got married in, Oct in October. <laughs> I see them all the time, and I, every time I see them, my, my brain goes... Um, so they got married, and today they want to. Uh, they're going to come and join the church. So we're we're happy to have you guys as members. Um, so we just ask you the same questions that we ask: uh, Will you be faithful to, uh, to the United Methodist Church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? Yes. So we welcome you to the church, and um, uh, we'll we'll have the blood samples and stuff in just a little bit. So. We'll, so um, so, um, and, and Charles, also, yeah. um, I want to recognize the Egans because they're here, and we never did recognize them before, but they joined the church, uh, Rocky and Ashley. That's and right. So uh, Kingston. Here, Welcome them. They joined uh, two weeks ago, but, they, but we didn't have a chance to bring them up front, so we're glad to have them, too. Yeah, welcome. We're so glad you're here. So uh, before we do our closing prayer, just a, a little word about tonight again. You want to uh, remind just, us about yeah, that? Yeah, quickly, it's 6 o'clock, and it's in the sanctuary. And as I mentioned before, it feature a large orchestra, 40-piece orchestra, and um, a, a real mixture of celebration music and reflective music with uh, 80, uh, two different choirs from First Houston and from our own, so about 80-member choir, and then the doves hanging. So it would be a wonderful, meaningful service, and so hope you can be here for that in the sanctuary at 6 and it's not too late if you want to uh, write something on one of these doves uh, about uh, some uh, generous person in your life that uh, shared their love with you, and uh, they'll be strung up in the sanctuary this afternoon. Let's take each other's hands, and we'll say a prayer. I do want to remind you, uh, if this is our first announcement in here, uh, on December 21st, one of our favorite musicians, Peter Mayer, will be here. He's going to be here to do a concert that night. And I hope that you'll make plans to be here. We didn't get to have him here last year, and so we're excited about him coming back. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's always been our practice to do something around the darkest, longest night of the year. And Peter has so many great songs about that kind of stuff. I know you'll love it if you come. There is a country song, Holy One, that somebody sings that says, I've got to admit it, I've got a thinking problem. And that's hard to admit sometimes, that we both individually and culturally often really have a thinking problem. It's so evident sometimes, though, when we look around. We become rigid. Your creation continually seems able to take it from us. We become thoughtless in our way of thinking. And somehow the sun continues to shine and the rains continue to fall on the just and the unjust. The emergence of huge numbers of variety of species on this planet have only been reduced from the time that we as a culture and as a species gained dominance. It's us that seems to be about limitation. Your creation seems to be about continual growth and change. So help us to get on the bandwagon and join you in not clinging to what is or what has been and being open to discovering how the Spirit can move in us today. So we pray. Amen. I could while away the hours Conferring with the flowers Consulting with the rain 
and my thoughts I'd be scratching while my thoughts were busy hatching if I only had a brain. I'd unravel every riddle for any individual in trouble or in pain. Tell you why the oceans by the shore. I think some thoughts I never thunk before, and then I sit and think some more. Think some more. I would not be just a nothing. On my hand, all full of stuffing, my heart all full of pain. I would be a dingle dairy if I only had a brain. That's the best you could do. And think some more. All my head would just be a nothing. My head all full of stuffing, and my heart all full of pain. Da 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 da. I'm a dingle dairy, but it would be a dingle dairy if I only. 